So the Scarif update has been out for over a week now, and what are my thoughts about it? So the Scarif update was the final major update for Battlefront 2, the final update where we're going to get massive bits of content um, and regular updates, uh, monthly updates, which honestly was a pretty sad thing to see. And there have, and by the time you were, by the time this has all happened some of the developers from Battlefront 2 have actually stayed to work on patches for bugs and everything which this update has a decent amount of bugs not gonna lie he uh, and I'm just gonna go over the bits of um, things that have been added um, such as the age of rebellion which was added to supremacy and in instant action and the playable maps are Hoth, Death Star 2, Tatooine, Yavin 4, and Scarif. And not only that, um, Scarif has been added to co-op alongside with the Resurgence class Star Destroyer and the MC-85 Star Cruiser for the Age of Resistance. Alongside with uh, Instant Action is Instant Action Missions where you can basically play co-op offline, which I'm really happy for those offline Battlefront 2 players, honestly, it has to suck not being able to uh, um, upgrade your infantry heroes and starfighters, which I'm glad they're at, they've they done that, um, but the one thing that, uh, honestly, I think offline players really need besides that is also being able to play Starfighter Assault, assault which, honestly, Starfighter Assault, which is getting a big F in the, in the comments for <laughs> Starfighter Assault. Alongside for Heroes vs. Villains, Crate and Scarif have been added to Heroes vs. Villains, which um, if you're looking, um, which right now um, there's an image of Crate on, of, on HVV and it just looks very beautiful, very beautiful map. Haven't gotten to play it, which sucks, but it's a very beautiful map. Um, there are people, people haven't been able to access, um, Scarif for HVV, which kind of seems disappointing, um, for a lot of people, and now, honestly, in terms of maps, um, that's, that were added for certain game modes, really nice, not gonna lie, 10 out of 10. Now, for, for appearances, the Shore Trooper is available for the Empire for all classes, um, but the one problem that I've noticed is that both the Heavy and the Assault class seem to look the same. Now, if DICE could possibly just add, like, maybe a Pauldron on the side, it would kind of signify that he's a Heavy, but I don't know. I guess it's a nice addition to see. Not only that, um, the Empire, you, as the Empire, you could play as the Snow Troopers for the Assault and Heavy, and for the First Order, you can now play as the First Order Snow Trooper for the Assault, which... I don't know why they haven't done that for the First Order, and it's kind of sad that there, besides the Officer, there's only one appearance for the First Order, which kind of sucks, and it also sucks how we don't have any Shock Trooper or even Shadow Trooper appearances for the Empire. And not only that, DICE has added the female appearance, um, the female Zabrak appearance, sorry, um, from Battlefront 2015 for the Specialist class um, for the Resistance and Rebellion, which is a really nice thing to see. Um, I just kind of wish they added something else for the Rebellion as well. And they also fixed the Zabrak Heavy appearance, which honestly, if you remember, that skin just looked so ugly. But now that I have it, honestly, I'm glad that I still have it because I am rocking that skin as the Heavy. You're not going to lie. But, um, honestly, kind of disappointing, and also the fact that these skins were, er, the infantry skins were all free, and also the fact that the hero appearances were free besides Old Master Maul and the Hooded Ray appearance, which is just so dumb. I was looking forward to purchasing this Maul skin when I saw it, and especially Palpatine. You know, I was looking so forward to that, and I figured the Ray Skywalker appearance was going to be the only thing that was going to be a milestone. And currently at the moment, um, DICE have actually fixed the 5,000 kill count for Maul, which honestly, I really don't mind 
because it actually feels like I've achieved something. And it's just really nice to see that Maul is getting his skin, which is 75% not accurate because he's actually missing the hood that's supposed to be on his outfit, which honestly, I don't really care. It's just a small change. I don't know, so not that big of a deal as long as Maul is finally getting a new skin. Um, but in terms of skins, honestly, a 9 out of 10, not going to lie. The only problem that I had is that for some reason Kylo Ren's reforged appearance made him look very buff and thick. I don't know why. He, um, Maul skin being 75% accurate. And the fact that they some of these um, appearances were free or locked by challenges. So... Um, honestly, not a bad update, if I'm going to say, if I'm going to be completely honest, and this, Scarif is a very beautiful map, I missed it, um, when they added it back in 2016, when Rogue One came out, and Scarif was just a, such a beautiful map, I really, it was disappointed that I couldn't play Scarif, um, for Battlefront, and I was kind of disappointed that they didn't add Scarif into this game, but it's, it's been a long wait, um, for Scarif to return, and I'm honestly it's just really nice to see. Now, some of the things I wish that they could have added was offline Starfighter Assault for instant action, because they have it in arcade, um, the arcade, which kind of sucks. But also the fact is that there's no split screen for instant action, which made instant action, which makes that game offline game mode just suck compared to Battlefront. Two from 2005 because instant action you were able to have the chance to play split screen which was really nice but sadly they did not add that hopefully they add it in a patch if we could get enough people requesting for split screen instant action and instant action for starfighter assault which would be nice to see um not only that something that everybody has been asking for and even something that dennis Bramvel uh, even said is that they are going to be adding private matches. Private matches was supposed to come out during the part three of the Clone Wars um, DLC season and never arrived, which was very disappointing. And very disappointing. I was kind of sad about that. And, but um, not only that, um, the Psycho Rifle is has gotten a buff and it's so nice to use it now. Um, the Wookiee Warrior got a slam ability, which I guess is alright. Um, I didn't see the necessary change for that, which that was actually supposed to come back in February, which I don't know why it took them so long. Now, that is pretty much it that I've gone through. Now, if this wasn't the last update, the final last big update of content, I would have given this update... A eight out of oh no, a nine out of ten. Honestly, this was a really good update. Scarif, we've been waiting for a very long time, and I couldn't wait to play Scarif when it was announced. But since this was like the final big update in terms of content, I have to give this a six out of ten because I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't add private matches. They didn't give a. They didn't give us um anything besides. Co offline co-op for instant action which I was kind of disappointed and the fact that there's so many bugs that are still in this game that they just haven't fixed that they should have done within this update honestly but and also the fact is that people have tons of credits and they can't spend it which I might actually have to do another video about that so anyway that is pretty much it for this video guys hope you guys all enjoy and I'll see you all next time peace out